Happy Friday, Mayor Dan Pope with a weekly update. So today's a little bit different. We're doing this uh, live on, on Facebook Live. And instead of me just uh, pontificating on something today, I'm, I'm gonna answer your questions. We had a remarkable response to the uh, request for questions. And so today I've taken sort of the, the greatest hits, the most popular questions and sometimes grouped them together and I'll try to answer them. Not every question is gonna get answered. Um, and some of the questions that I, I'll touch on today or that maybe I don't touch on today will, will serve as uh, content for future videos because there are some really great questions. If you have a specific question that I don't answer, email me at mayordanpope at gmail.com. That's the very best way to get to me, mayordanpope at gmail.com. Okay, so let's get started. The, the first question is, a, uh, it's a, we had a series of questions around, uh, around LPNL, and there were questions about ERCOT and about the, uh, the purchase of, uh, ERP, of, of XL Energy, which happened uh, 10 years ago now. And, but I'm gonna focus a little bit on where we are today and why we're going to ERCOT. So uh, today we're three years in, soon to start the fourth year of a plan to uh, bring our infrastructure up to speed. For many years, XL and LPNL competed, and frankly, they didn't invest a lot in our, our physical plant, and we, we need to do that, and we've been doing that. As you recall, the, the five-year plan included a 5.75% increase in the base rate. Now remember the base rate only makes up about 30% of your LPNL bill. So for the average citizen, that's about a little less than $2 a month increase per year over a five-year period. That, that was the dollar, those are the dollars that we're gonna use or we're using to upgrade the, uh, all, all parts of that infrastructure that delivers electricity to you. Now the good news in that is that last week at, or several weeks ago at the LPNL board meeting, uh, their new budget only includes a 5% increase for year four, and they don't feel like they'll need an increase in all uh, in, in year five. So we're gonna be able to do it with less dollars than what we originally thought. I think that's it's good leadership. The ERCOT decision, I believe, makes sense. ERCOT is the, is the power uh, uh, grid for the rest of the state of Texas. We, uh, and, and certainly there's some folks that are part of ERCOT or there's some providers in ERCOT that are very big and have had some, um, some problems. And some of you talked about that in your, uh, in your questions. Let me be clear, we're gonna operate as a municipally owned utility inside ERCOT. LPNL will still be our provider for electricity. We'll operate just like San Antonio and Austin and Garland and College Station. Those are examples of other cities in the state that are part of ERCOT but they, the, the utility is owned by the city and we'll operate that very same way. I think it's a good decision. I'll continue to talk about LPNL as we go through the summer, but uh, that's a, uh, hopefully I've answered your questions and, and about that. Uh, the, the next question was around tornado sirens. We had a couple of questions around that. Here's clearly where I am on that. I support the idea of, of, of tornado sirens. I think they're part of, not all, they're not fail safe, and they're part of a early warning system that would help us in, in a severe weather situation. So that's where I am. Um, I believe that we will talk about it in our budget discussions this summer. I'll make sure we do, because it's gonna be something that I bring up and we'll keep you posted, but it's something that I would like to see us be able to do. Third set of questions are around uh, beautification. There were the, it was interesting, there were a number of questions about different parts of town and, and how, how we, clean up and do beautification and so it's a big question let me sort of hit on a couple of points there number one we've, we've done a bunch of community cleanups neighborhood cleanups all spring and if your neighborhood wants to do one and you've not done one and you want us to bring a roll-off dumpster out for you to help call call us and let us know I'm gonna give you some contact information in a minute but call us and let us know we'll support that uh, if you need some help finding volunteers to help us reach out we may be able to help you with that also one of the things that where we all can make an impact on what our community looks like is individually the way we take care of our trash. Let's pick up trash as we see it, let's not walk it over it. We, this time of year in particular, we, do, we deal with a lot of breezes and winds. And if we don't secure our trash well, then that means that trash becomes somebody else's trash. It becomes the community's problem. So let's focus on that. Texas Tech and TxDOT and the city are committed to making our freeways, 
I-27, Marsha Sharp Freeway, the Loop, which those are all TxDOT roads. So they have uh, primary responsibility for maintenance, mowing, et cetera. But together, we're trying to make sure that the gateway into Lubbock, certainly the interstate and the road from the airport and the Marsha Sharp, we, we want it to look better. That means we need to clean up the trash. That means we're, try, we're doubling down a little bit on that effort to make sure that, that we're doing that. Uh, maybe some of the vegetation and landscape. There were questions about the uh, Regis Corridor. Um, so that's the, the, uh, the east-west road that connects Martin Luther King and the interstate uh, at the airport. Uh, for years, we've had plans about uh, doing something there. They keep getting putting off and being put off and put off. I think you'll see us start to make some move on that in the next year to 18 months. Uh, it's important. It's not as important as some of the things we have, but we do realize that that first impression of our community is very, very important. So stand by for that, but uh, I, I really uh, appreciate those questions. The next set of questions was around codes, and I'm gonna put my glasses on because there, there are a number of these, and I'll try to hit them as a group, but people talked about uh, folks that don't mow, their, don't mow their grass and park trailers in their yards and, and do things that are clearly outside of city ordinance. And, the very best way to address that is to call 311. In fact, that's the best way to get a, any kind of city problem solved. Call 311. That goes straight to City Hall. We have a, a group of, 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 of uh, customer service professionals that answer the phone and they'll route your call to the right place. If, if you have a, a weed issue and you want to talk to codes, call 311, tell them your issue, they'll get you to codes. Now you always could call the city council and mayor's office if you don't feel like you're getting what you want or if you want to call us. But we're going to do, follow the very same process that 311 does. Our number is 775-2050. If you've got a bad actor in your neighborhood, somebody that doesn't mow their yard, somebody that doesn't take care of the, doesn't follow the rules, somebody that has trash in their yard, you're going to have to be persistent. You're going to have to call us and call us and call us because generally one visit from our folks is not going to solve the problem. But the only way that neighborhoods rise above that is if is a group of neighbors together take care of their property and put pressure on those folks to follow the rules. We'll take care of our side, but you're going to have to engage us. Now that's a good, that segues into this next piece around codes. We'll work this year during our budget process to add a couple positions in the codes department. We need to be more proactive on codes and less reactive. That's a goal of ours. It's one of our six priorities as a council as we talk about our neighborhoods. So uh, stand by for more news there. Watch us, hold us accountable to that. But you're gonna have to let us know. Call 311 or call the city council and mayor's office, 775-2050. But let's make sure that we're putting pressure on the people that will not, that aren't following the rules. There is a way to remedy that. There was a, a couple questions about the Coliseum and Auditorium, and one of them said, when can we expect action on the abandonment and demolition of the Auditorium and Coliseum? Now, we, we've not taken any formal action uh, around that, and I'm one of seven votes on the council, but let me tell you what, where I am. It cost us between $750 and a million dollars a year to maintain the Auditorium and Coliseum. That's just to put, turn the lights on, to heat it, to cool it, uh, to pay for the people that do that. Uh, that does not include maintenance. We have a tremendous amount of maintenance in those facilities, deferred maintenance, things that, we've, that should have been done. And, and for a, the last number of years, councils have not funded that. And I, I'm not an advocate of spending any maintenance money to replace bathrooms, redo roofs, that, that type of stuff. I, that, to me, that would not be a good investment. Those facilities um, are, are aged. I don't believe that they're great assets as they are today. Buddy Holly Hall and the Civic Center, which we've just invested money in the, uh, in the uh, theater area of the Civic Center, both of those will replace the need that we have today for the, uh, for the, Colise the auditorium. Uh, the Coliseum is a little more uh, tricky because we need, a, we need a place for dirt events. That's not necessarily a function that the city has to provide, but I think we're working on some ideas there. But remember that if, if, we, if, if at any time we want to do something with the uh, auditorium and coliseum, they revert back to Texas Tech. That's the legislation that was written in the 40s, I believe, 
And, and so we would have to work to tech with Texas Tech on that. Those are not assets that the city could turn and sell to someone who could come in and take take that land. Um, I would imagine that you'll hear us talk about uh, Auditorium and Coliseum as we go through the budget this year. Dog park, a number of questions around dog parks. So we had a, 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 a speaker that came to our city council meeting two weeks ago to ask about it. Uh, I chatted, I, I made a comment after her, after she uh, left the, the podium. We're working on a, uh, a, a first dog park with a, a local family who wants to donate the land. Uh, we've had a meeting within the last 30 days. We're waiting uh, for a second meeting, waiting on some plans being drawn and some, some details to that, but I would expect that we would have that in the next first uh, half of June. We're also looking at a couple ideas to, to put some dog parks in some of our city parks. Uh, we're listening, okay? We know it's important to a lot of our citizens. I used to think it was just important to the young people this week. I had uh, two grandmothers that stopped me in two different meetings in different parts of town to tell me how excited they were about dog parks. Uh, I think it's something that we hear you. We know it's part of a, a community being livable and being a place where young people want to be and we need to have a community where you love, young people want to live. So uh, uh, follow us on that, but that, that's the most recent update on dog parks. I, there were a number of questions about potholes and traffic signals and uh, uh, street lights. Uh, th those were great questions. And I'm not, I can't ha handle those individually, but call 311 or call the mayor's office. Let us know. We, we're at uh, the LPNL budget. It's interesting that this, that, that, that this question came up because one of the things that's in the LPNL budget this year is some personnel to pay more attention to street lights that are out and, and we don't know about it. And so we just need to be watching that and making sure that we're taking care of our end of, of the deal there. But uh, on those kind of situations where we're not addressing, call 311, tell them what your problem is, let them get you to the right spot. They'll respond. If they don't respond, let me know. Let, you can email me or you, you can reach out to us by phone on the numbers that I've shared with you. I think I'll stop. I think I'll stop right there. That's uh, seven or eight questions I've had a chance to, to cover today. Um, we'll do this again uh, uh, later this summer. We may get to a point where we do it once a month. It uh, seems to be uh, something that you're interested in. I know I didn't get to all the questions. I, I tried to take the ones that I thought were more, uh, we had the most responses and maybe were most pertinent to, uh, to what we're doing right now. At our council meeting last night, we talked quite a bit about facilities. So next week at my, at my um, video, we'll talk probably about police facilities and some more details around that. This weekend is Memorial Day. Uh, it's the beginning of summer. Uh, we have uh, graduations, high school graduations all weekend. Kids get out of school. If they're not out of school, they get out of school today. It's a fun time. It's, uh, uh, I think a lot of us think about Memorial Day and we think about families and barbecues and the swimming pool and getting outside. Um, and I hope you have a very fun, safe weekend. I do want to remind you, though, that we, uh, we've been celebrating Memorial Day since the Civil War, some version of it since the Civil War. And, and it, it's the purpose of Memorial Day is to remember um, those men and women who um, fought for the freedom that we have today. And the, and the, the freedom that we um, take for granted often but that's so important to us. So sometime this weekend, uh, whether you get a chance to go to a Memorial Day service or put your flag out on Monday, uh, but just take a minute and reflect on that. Thank the people you know that serve in our service. Um, we very well this weekend may be honoring a family member of yours that, that served and that, that gave their life in, in support of our country. I appreciate your, uh, your, your prayers. I appreciate your good ideas and your thoughts and your encouragement. I love getting to serve you as your mayor. I hope you have a great weekend. I'll talk to you next week.